Green is the new gold. Our 18-hole Niklaus design, award-winning golf course and clubhouse will leave you green with envy. We don't just say, we do. It's the Stain City way. Welcome to Real Talk. I am your host, Anelem Doda, and our guest today is a warm-hearted, loving rock of a woman who, after uh, having suffered the unimaginable and the heart-wrenching shock of the untimely death of her husband, Fisongane, last year, she is sitting here stronger, radiant, and more in tune with her higher being. Thank you so much for joining us. I posted your picture on Instagram to be like, she's on the show today, yes. please watch. And one of the comments that stuck out for me was somebody saying, please give her a collective hug from the entire country. Oh, wow. You know, oh, so wow. I was like, ah, people, they don't forget about you. And I remember when it happened, it was like, I mean, we knew him because he sang our favorite songs. Oh, yes. And yeah. you guys were so warm and giving, but we, we just felt like we lost somebody we knew. So I think you must just know that the country, you've always in their thoughts. Thank you so much. Let's Thank talk about Usiswa said Dwe Dwe. Ndwe Dwe. Yes, Ndwe Dwe. Dwe Dwe. Right? That's where you grew up. That's where I grew up, yes. With your grandmother. With my grandmother. Uh -huh. yes. um, uh, in the early 80s, uh -huh. I grew up uh, in the village of Ndwe Dwe. Ndwe Dwe. yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, very deep rural areas uh, where I was groomed by my grandmother, my late grandmother. Um, I matriculated at Tenumbira High School. Mm. <clears throat> and then a year after, because my dad has passed on, so yeah. I had a dream of becoming um, Miss SA. <laughs> Is that why you entered Miss Durban and yes. Miss Durban T? Yes. Okay, you had a plan. I yes. like it. <laughs> Well, when my dad passed away, so uh, my mom told us that uh, we no longer have money to go to university to further our studies. Mm. So my plan was, okay, so I've seen that there are so many opportunities. Oh, said, Anna, they've, yes. they've got this thing right. Exactly. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so, so my eye was there and I thought, you know what, let me just try uh, modeling. Uh. Uh, because it's something that I can do at the moment. And look at me, I don't look too bad. <laughs> <laughs> I can pull this off. By the grace of God, <laughs> yes. But you know what, I believe that you were raised by your grandmother because every time I've seen you, you're always wearing your Sunday best and only grandmothers want <laughs> people to be like that. <laughs> you, am I lying? It's the clock I am. Oh, okay. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm just like, no, man. Every time magazine, TV, awards in the street, in a shop, right? You are, you always look this impeccable, and that's a grandmother <laughs> thing, right? Yeah, I think looking decent is one of the things is when that to introduce how yeah. you introduce yourself is yeah. not what you tell people. Yeah. People look at you and they decide who you are. So it's very important how you present yourself. Mm. Yes, self presentation. So your plan to do the pageants? Yes. How well did it work out for you? Uh, it did not go well with Miss. <laughs> it did not. It did not go well uh, with Miss S eighteen. Yeah. Uh, me and my friends, uh, when we came to Joburg in two thousand and two, uh, for for the finals, mm. uh, I, I could not make it obviously. Uh, but then uh, I fell in love with the city of Joburg. Okay. Um, a friend of mine. Um, had a relative here in Joburg. So you um, could stay there? Then we stayed here in yeah. Joburg, and on the following Monday, we were supposed to go back home uh -huh. to Durban. And then uh, she said, oh, you know what, there are actresses, um, there's a, a, a Moyo restaurant opening um, in, in Melrose Arc. Yes. Uh, they're looking for young uh, people. To, to waitress. And we're like, what? We're in. We are in. Let's go try. Then we went on Monday. We were supposed to go home to Durban. Yeah. When we could not go back, I phoned my mom and I begged her, please, mom, please let go. Me stay. go. Can I please? <laughs> um, they, they let me stay only because there was an elder. Okay, your, yes. the, your friend's relative? Yes, definitely. Okay. So I stayed in Joburg. Um, that's, when, that's how I came to Joburg. But um, now, what I want to know is, so you were interesting. 
I started waitressing. And you, you're a pretty girl. Yes. The men you're serving, don't they want to save you? Because you know men want to <laughs> save pretty girls all the time. It's like, ah, why? what's a girl like you doing in a place like this, serving passion fruit and lemonade? Do you know what I'm saying? Don't you get men who just want to save you when that happens? Uh, well, it obviously happens all the time. Mm. It, it used to happen all the time. Mm. Uh, but my excitement was more of... Uh, uh, Staying in Joburg. Staying in Joburg, ah. you know, and making sure that come Friday, I want to deposit money from my mom, from my grandmother. I want to, I want to, to convince them and let them, uh, to convince them to let me stay in Joburg because ah. this city is beautiful and it's, it's so lively. But I'm, I'm a deep rural girl area, yeah. uh, you know, I'm from the deep rural areas of Indueto and here is this gorgeous city of Joburg and it's like, okay, I'm loving this. So, so the people who were in, in Duende, right? Yes. You say that you, you didn't want to be a stat that ends up there and grows up there and I, works there. Yes. You were adamant from a young age that you're going to get out of here. I was definitely. Because of the things that were happening around us yeah. um, when we were younger, um, so many horrible things were happening uh, with women, uh, the rape issues. Nobody was arrested. People were being raped. Families would get together and things would be sorted out. And then I've seen women losing their loved ones and mm. being thrown out on the streets and nobody saying anything about it. Mm. And I, I made a promise to myself that I'm not going to be one of these girls. And one of the worst things that was happening at that time, I, 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 it is a pity that is still happening mm. uh, as we speak in part of the rural areas of South Africa and Africa. Mm. Um, underage, um, marriages. Arranged marriages. Oh. oh, that killed me a lot. So I experienced it with my personal friends. So two of my friends were taken f in front of my eyes um, uh, through Isigo called Utwala. So I was so devastated. To me, up until today, I have not healed completely from that act or yeah. that event of Ubutwala. So you knew that staying in Joburg would save you from all of that? I, I wanted to know. I wanted to make a better of myself. Mm. Um, I wanted to grow as a woman because I knew very well that my mom has told us that, well, no more varsity money. Daddy is gone. So I wanted mm. to work for the money. So only to find out God had totally different plans for me. So, mm. <laughs> so that's um, months later, I met uh, Uba Pungan. <laughs> yes. What's your relation? What was your relationship with your dad like? Because when I look at your relationship with Uba mm -hmm. it's it, you know even if you don't, if somebody doesn't know your dad, they know that he set a benchmark where this is how my daughter is treated, and okay. everyone else can. <laughs> I either either you you are here or I go pay, You know. Well, um, unfortunately, we did not get time to spend with my dad. Uh -huh. um, he loved us, but he left us very early. He okay. passed on very early. Okay. Uh, I was only 12 years old. But you felt passed. the love? I felt the love, yes, we did, we did. Felt the love. Uh, he, he named me Emerald. So oh, wow. <laughs> yes. That's an expensive <laughs> that name. Is my, the, <laughs> my first name is Emerald, <laughs> yes. So he named me Emerald, uh, the precious one. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, we, I look like him. So I'm always told that I look exactly like my dad. And I, when I look at his pictures, I'm like, oh, OK. okay. You are such a, a charmer. I was about to say, like, if you look <laughs> like your dad, then yeah. <laughs> we're dealing with the handsome man here. Oh, yeah, we do. <laughs> and your friends um, that know you from childhood, do you think they're surprised that you're sitting here? Or did everyone always know, oh, I understand now, destined for great things? Um, most of my friends, they knew uh, that I wanted something different in life. Okay. <clears throat> I wanted something more great uh. because my grandmother taught us to be different and be great uh. so she was all about about greatness so uh, my friends when we were talking uh, i remember in grade 12 miss Misongo, our class teacher uh. used to ask everybody uh, so uh, well time is up guys what are your plans what are you going to be so for me i didn't want to be a teacher because uh. my dad was a teacher but yeah. you know it, things were not going well yeah um, my um, my aunt was a nurse, but she did not blow up. So I wanted something that's going to make me grow, not for myself, for, for everyone to around come you. back to my, my village, because I wanted to change the cause, to change the situation around my village. Yeah. All right. So 
Legend has it that the day Ubabungwane met her was the day he said he would marry her. Don't you just melt at that story? We find out about the day these two lovebirds met and ultimately fell in love after the break. And welcome back to Real Talk with me, Anela. Today we're chatting with the lovely Ayanda Ngwane. And you agree that she's lovely. Apparently all you're saying on Twitter is beautiful. Hugs, hearts, <laughs> hearts, hearts. Huh? Let's speak about the heart. So, wow. Ubaba Ngwane, the first day he sees you, he's yeah. like, yo, I'm going to marry you. Yes, and I thought it was a joke. <laughs> and I even told him, like, Psh. <laughs> no, <laughs> it was a joke. Um, only to find out that he had it was love at first sight for uh -huh, him. Uh -huh. uh, for me, it was uh, it's just a boy that I met. You mm. know, obviously we exchanged numbers um, in two, in August two thousand and two. Uh -huh. Yes. So. So how does he ask you to? Because I mean. Shouldn't I later realize how kind of serious? <laughs> you like, hey, 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 serious, I'm fine. Oh yeah. How does he ask you to be his lady? Of course, with this. Husky tiny voice. <laughs> 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 oh, Obviously, I laughed. I'm like, oh, <laughs> you know, um, and obviously, I we kept on talking over the phone mm. um, up until he charmed me um, with um, when he sang the song by Maxwell, this woman's work. He sang it exactly like Maxwell, <laughs> and I was like. Hey man. Okay. Pray God you can call. Yes. So there was a day that I thought, wow, oh my gosh, he he's kind of cute. Okay. <laughs> I'll, like, let me go out with him. There's something there. Yes. There's something there. Yes. So yeah. 2002. Then you guys dated until 2007. Yes. We That's dated. Five years. We dated, and a year after, well, I fell pregnant. <laughs> well, if you sang, I'd, <laughs> I'd also forget the pulse. <laughs> And I fell pregnant the, the following year because I was ready to go to school. Oh. Unfortunately, the time I was ready to go to school, I fell pregnant. Yeah. It was very tough with my mother having to go back home now that I'm pregnant. Yeah. Uh, it was quite a very difficult time. But it's a true love story because you fell pregnant a year after you guys started dating. Yes. But you only got married five years later. So there was got married five years later. Wasn't this rush of, oh, you're pregnant. You know, what a scandal. Oh. They must get married. It was all within your time. No, unfortunately, with his career at that time, oh. things were not going well. He was still um, at the bottom of his career. Yes. He was still starting, you know, with uh, his career, his ministry at okay. that time. And uh, he grew in the ministry. Uh, he had to go uh, try to, to grow himself, mm. Mm. Uh, record companies. Um, well, he was trying there and there. Uh, things were not moving the way obviously you'd want to move mm -hmm. as a musician mm. but by the grace of God he, at some point he left the first company that he was recorded with mm -hmm. which was Luz Mose at that time mm -hmm. and then he went uh, to CCP EMI um, it, things got a little bit a little better, better yeah. yes obviously and then I got saved yeah, that was mm. 2006 okay. I got saved and that's when our life changed around okay. because uh, it's amazing what a woman can be an influence in a partnership oh, yes. and in a relationship. Because then the man yes. has to chase God to get to you. You know, <clears throat> when a woman is, doesn't know Christ, I'm not saying uh, it cannot work, but um, with my husband's ministry, it was very important that God uh, uh, puts near him somebody mm. who's godly who's a fully unapologetic christian, christian yeah. so that the ministry will grow mm. so uh, i got saved in 2006 um, and when we got saved obviously things of the past we have to leave yeah yes yeah. unfortunately i remember when i was calling at home because my grandmother was so in love with my husband he loved him so much i'm like how but God, go, go, ask But because we, 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 are now, we are now saved, so we, we, we don't see each other in that sense. Yes, yeah. but we are no longer in, in, 
you know, we don't do boyfriend, girlfriend yeah, stuff. We, we exist understand? together, we're exactly. raising a child. And he also had repented at that time. Oh. So we, we fully went to Christ. And then I remember things were crumbling. Uh, at some point, I remember after we accepted Christ, uh, we were staying in Jamestown. <laughs> Ten months later, we could not afford rent, and we were chased out. <laughs> we were chased outside, and when we went, when we were chased outside, obviously, all our couches and with your the furniture, the whole furniture, the toaster, was, girl. Yes. <laughs> so I was, we was just sitting like this, <laughs> thinking design. about what's next. So <laughs> one of the things that we look back and say, there is a God in heaven. Yeah. Yes. So. In the midst of, of that turmoil, in the midst of that uh, storm. And the bottom, it, like literally we being We were at the, the bottom, bottom, yes. And he says, uh, uh, baby, yes, I'm like, oh, you can't ask <laughs> to, to marry me. <laughs> 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 I remember it was February when he asked, uh, when he proposed, obviously he could not afford the ring. Uh -huh. He said, you know what, let's just get married. And you're thinking, how? Oh, but we don't have food. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We talk about marriage. Marriage I mean. requires, so you're not even thinking the wedding now. You're just thinking marriage, like it requires us a place to live. Exactly. Food, clothes, a job. And he said, I've asked God that I want to marry you and then let's take it from there. And then, okay. We went to our pastor. We told him that we want to get, we want to, he wants to marry me. Mm. He said, okay. Obviously with him, it was like, oh, but son, with what? <laughs> Obviously, inside. But he said it to himself. <laughs> yes. It was between him and God. He's <laughs> like, hey. Okay, <laughs> 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 But um, it was February when he, uh, when he asked me, you asked to marry me, Ubapmwane. And then June 30, the same year, we uh. got married. Um, he bought his first car. <laughs> Miraculously. That's how God works. Mm. We, Did you always call him Babungan? Uh, he loved it when I called him Mabu. Oh. <laughs> what did he call you? Baby, you know my Kim K. Kim, Kim, Kim <laughs> Kardashian? Oh, yes, I remember this. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was supposed to be our, you know, like your, at home. Your, your pillow you know, talk. Exactly. <laughs> so, he, unfortunately, he, he, he forgot and he ended up... Uh, but he said, my wife is prettier than Kim Kardashian. <laughs> and people are like, yeah, well, yes. <laughs> we, uh, he wished. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's right. Um, yeah. Okay, so. Yeah, so we got married in June 2007. And yeah. So you've got two kids. So obviously you saw him being a dad with the first child where the, it was quite, uh, you know, there was a bit of turmoil. Yes. And then when you gave birth to the second child, I mean, he was always a dad. Mm -hmm. How did you see him grow into the role of being a father? You know, as, 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 cause I mean, you were a girlfriend, then you were yeah. a, your wife, then you were a, a, always a mother as yes. well. For him, the growth, how did you see him go from being just a Sfisa to being Sfisa the father? Um, uh, he was really trying because he never had a father figure in his uh, life. Uh. So, and at that time he was still searching for his dad. Oh, wow. So oh. it was, there was a, a gap inside him. Okay. There was that space that everybody, including myself, we were not aware. It, it, it's so huge oh, up yeah. until 2010 when we finally found his father. Uh, by the grace of God, I thank God for two prophets who, who prophesied the name of his father. Uh -huh. And then we found him in 2010. It was August again. August is, August is your and I was, I was born in August, so. Okay. <laughs> yes. So, so, yeah. so did the relationship with his dad pick up? Did they make up? Did it make him a better person? Ah, wow. It's, uh, when we were driving to Eastern Cape in 2010, I, I remember it was World Cup. It was very, there was, there was, uh, it was uh, very cold yeah. in Eastern Cape. We, we drove driving to Eastern Cape and he just knew because so many people were approaching him. Saying, I'm your father. Yes, yes, you know, mm. but he, he will just know. That's I know. He's taking chances. Mm. Another guy will come and say, I'm your dad. This, and you'll tell stories, and you just know. Ayanda could feel it. This man is taking chances. Up until when we met uh, our, 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 uh, my, my father in law, mm. my younger son, Mawenza, when we, we, when we were shown the address, the mm. house, immediately my son, we, we came off the car. My son went straight. There were so many people. 
he went, went straight, straight to, to him. him and that's how we confirmed it was it was him so <laughs> it was just God's divine plan oh, wow. yeah okay that is a godly moment yeah on the way we talk about the rise and the rise of the money yeah. you want to come back that is insane I'm sure you were like, when are they coming back from the ad break? Welcome back, Real Talk on SBC3, where the stage is yours, still with me on the couch. What a godly moment, Ayanda Ngane. So 2013 yes. was the rise and the rise of the Nganes, eh? Oh, wow, yes. So you guys won every award. I, I think, I mean, you think, okay, so 2010, things are going right, and he found mm. his father, but mm. for me, 2013 solidified you guys as, a, you know, and Sfiso as a household name, oh, yes. as a powerhouse in gospel, yes. and I'm sure it solidified his ministry as well. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Uh, 2013 was, um, as you are saying, a nearly <laughs> a very big year for mm. us. Very overwhelming and challenging at the same time. Mm. We were not ready that the album was going to do that well. Yeah, okay. Yes, and we are working together as a couple. Mm. When did you start managing him? Uh, when we, we started the company together oh, in 2009. Money communications. Money communications. Yes. So we decided that we are going to work very hard. So yeah. he said, baby, I am also, also shut the Dongala. <laughs> You're going to manage me. <laughs> so <clears throat> that's how it started. I didn't know anything about artist management then. So I had to learn. I had to find information, mm. get to know about copyright, get to know about certain things, mm. how to get him, you know, from level to level. So... And did it not put a strain in your relationship? I mean, you're working and it, then you... It did at okay. first. It, it, it was very, very difficult because at home, it, my husband is a typical, you can say Kosa, but he's a typical Zulu man. Yeah, Kosa Zulu man, same <laughs> Kosa thing. Kosa Zulu man. He, he wants me to cook at home. Uh. So go travel and when you come back, he would still expect me to be a wife at home and yeah. actually food is, food is he needs cooked food. Yeah. So... It was very strenuous. That's why we lost a lot on our kids when they were younger. We oh. lost quite a lot on Ungwe Dinomawenza. We could not spend enough time. So they were more like my s elder sister's kids children. and my, my mother's children. Mm. So my siblings were really, really helping us a lot when we were finding our foot. Yeah, in, putting in the, the foundation on. Putting the foundation. It was very difficult, but it's something that we really wanted to do. And we... We were so hungry to, to, to oh. see the gospel industry growing. So we were ready to take every single risk available out there together. So, yeah. What a beautiful story. Yeah. So could you tell him things like, Babungana, you're working too hard. Come down. Um, I think when things are coming all right, yeah. uh, when oh. you're getting what you want, you don't want to stop. Okay. That is the reality. You just don't want to stop. Okay. Uh, when you have achieved this, you say, ah, We'll next. We'll rest it. Next, next holiday. Let's just take this one. We're Let's definitely take taking a holiday. Yeah. But come next holiday, you're like, ah, you look at what you've achieved, and you say, ah, I want to do better than that. All right. So it's it, it was that race for us. We wanted to grow and grow and grow together. By the grace of God, we were we were trying our level best. Mm. Um, and also, what was <clears throat> what we wanted? Wh what we saw a gap between the gospel industry. And other genres, yes. and we thought because we've done, w I have, I had done uh, my 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 research, yeah, and I found out that gospel music, no offense, to sells anyone, the most, is the biggest yes. genre in Africa. Yes, <laughs> sorry, <Okay. laughs> sorry <laughs> about it, but it's true. In terms of everything, for that matter, <clears throat> so we said, you know what? Let's not limit ourselves to the church mm. people or Christian people. Let us find ways of cr of cross or crossing genres. Yeah, you yeah. know, that's when we started approaching big events to say, I would call and say um, a, 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 a jazz e a festival. Yes, I would call the, pro the organizers and say, um, I'm managing Mubaknuanya, and I need him to be featured on this on this event. That's how it started. And first few big festivals, yeah. Oma Kufe, Deben, Hazelmere Jazz, they know they are witnesses, they've seen what he has, he has done. When he goes to that stage... It would just erupt. My goodness. So 
we wanted to take those risks. We wanted, we didn't want to limit ourselves to say, we are, no, we are gospel. We belong to mm, only the church mm, community. No, mm. we wanted to go. And I remember when we, we were saying, baby, how about we go and we do Life Amp? I know, <laughs> Life Amp was a big thing. Yes. The life, because, I mean, Life Amp is hip hop. Yes. And it come and it exactly. quiet. And then Uba is doing like, how? First, first gospel artist. Yeah. We said, let's do it. Okay, let's do it. Because we, we're married. We stay up until early hours of the morning trying to beat our, you know, our previous level. Yes. So we say, okay, baby, let's do it. It's fine. Let's, let's go to Joburg. We'll drive, drive to Joburg of, because he, he hated flying. Okay. <laughs> we'll just drive to Joburg and, say, and call and find out, guys, where are the life offices? We want to go there. And we'll just go and ask. And we say, Sveso, on life amp. But these things gospel. We said, let us try. Try us, please. And um, I, I, I thank God for Glungile Baba because it gave us, especially when he won Record of the Year Award. At the summer. Because it, it, that is when gospel industry was taken, I'm not saying it was not taken serious before, mm -hmm. but <clears throat> it opens people's eyes that if a gospel song could be nominated in this the biggest category yes, in the country yes. and actually won it means okay there's something this gospel thing is is, is yeah, equal the popularity needs to match the, exactly. the sales the, the sales yeah, exactly what yeah. you're saying so life amp they gave us a chance mm. and then psh, from there we were not unstoppable. We were not. Stoppable. We were unstoppable. unstoppable. We there were unstoppable. Go. We we wanted. We moved from one show to the other. We would just dream of something, and you say, "Okay, Let's what are we waiting it. for? Let's go." So yeah. the he w he went to go do an event in Limpopo, right? Yes. And you heard that from his his band members that he wasn't feeling well. Yeah. Do you call him and say, "Babungane"? Uh, Variety, what's going on? I'm a concerned wife. What's going on? Um, Bob Nguyen and I called each other. You would swear we are girlfriend and boyfriend because there you every are. single thing would say, Okay, wait, let me call my wife first. People know they even hated me for that. Ah, oh, so for Nelu Ayanda, I didn't call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he said, oh, Wait, wait, let me call. So he called me and said, ah, Baby, I'm not feeling okay. Um, and I asked him, Are you? going to be able to go on stage mm. and we say yeah I'll try but I feel so dizzy and tired mm. that is last year mm. on the on the third mm. when he was booked in Limbombo and then he went on on stage and performed after he, he had performed he got more tired mm. I remember you say he said nothing is sore but he just feels like he's tired he f yeah he said that's exactly what he was saying yeah so he came home around 5 a.m. because he drove back from Limbombo. He didn't want to sleep in Limbombo. He refused to sleep in Limbombo. So he drove back to sleep at home. So I asked him, how are you? And he mm. said, oh, babe, I'm fine, but let me rest. And then he rested, um, he slept. And then around 11, I woke him up because um, he had to go to a Kai FM, FM event. event. Yes. Yes. 11 at night or 11 in the morning? In the morning, okay, yeah. yes. And then he ate um, and then they, they showered with the guys that he works with and then they rushed to the Kaya FM event. The, the guys that he worked with, the, they're always around. Like every time you tell a story, like they're there. Uh, yes, they are. They, they are more like the, the brothers okay. to Ubapuan. Yes. Okay, so they don't like drop him off and then go somewhere else. No. I just feel like they're always there. No, they're, they're always all, around. They're, they're always there because they were always there well okay. they were always there um because they were always wherever we, wherever we go we were always working mm -hmm. so for us work and play it was same the same thing, thing. yeah okay. so we're gonna take a quick break when we come back we will talk about the day that changed ayanda's life forever Hello and welcome back. If you've just tuned in, I'm chatting to Ayanda Ngwane, widow of the late gospel great Swiso Ngwane. Thank you so much for all your tweets of encouragement and love. I must mention one at Faith M says, Ayanda, man, you're going to make me bend my pots, man. <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't look away from you. So you say on the day he was supposed to go to a Kai FM yeah. event yeah. and <clears throat> he collapsed in the bathroom. 
And then when he, when he went to um, a Kaya FM event, yeah. he phoned me again when, when they, uh, 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 at, the st at the, the, the venue. Yeah. He said, oh, baby, I'm not feeling well. Please call uh, the organizer. Mm. Tell him, uh, ask for them to excuse me because I don't think I'll be able to, 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 to perform. Um, and then I immediately called the organizers and I, at, I asked to excuse him. So they s immediately sent um, uh, the paramedics to his car mm. and then he was checked and said, okay, no, he looks exhausted. And then they asked him, where have you been? And he said, I've been touring almost every day for the past two weeks. And then they said to him, okay, it's fine. You look exhausted. Okay. You can go. You can go home. And then when he got home, psh, he was fine. Because uh, when he got home, I, I remember I was, uh, I, I was holding my bag ready for us to go to the doctor, to the hospital. To the hospital. Yeah. It was a Sunday. And he said to me, oh, baby, no, it's fine. It's Sunday anyway. What will they do to me? Let's just wait for our doctor. And then I'll go see my doctor tomorrow morning. Mm. Because there's no pain anywhere in my body. That's a thing. Mm. I'm just exhausted. I'm just I'm, tired. I'm, I'm feeling so tired. All I need is some rest. If you could just allow me to rest you know he kept on saying the rest i want to rest mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. only comes after he has passed on that hymen this so rest was eternally what what rest did he mean yeah. when he kept on saying baby i need rest i need to rest and i'm tired and then we we're sitting watching tv in sunday afternoon very lazy sunday um i don't know if it was such a coincidence or what but we were talking about marriages uh, why the enemy is, he is 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 in a mission to destroy marriages uh, so much uh, it's like in the kingdom of darkness the enemy has made it the number one priority to just destroy, destroy marriages, marriages families especially families for young people uh, so we're just discussing that topic in the house and <clears throat> he said okay he didn't even say, say, I'm going to the bathroom. He just stood on the couch and then he went to the bathroom. Mm. Not dizzy, nothing, because he had come down because he had rested. And you, you are now feeling better about not going to the hospital, right? So I'm feeling better because, because he looks better. We are talking, okay. you know, the way he was looking at me, I was, I was telling uh, my friends and, and my, my, my family that there was such a way that he was looking at me. So... I, at that point, it's like, oh, he's being his, his, his charmful self. Mm. Only to find out that he was looking at me and say, only if you knew what's about to happen. What's about to happen. Like, like that sad look in his eyes, because oh. he even said to me, are you pregnant? I'm like, because we were trying for a baby girl. Oh. So I said, oh, I'm sorry, but I'm, no, no, I'm not yet pregnant. He's like, oh, okay, that's fine. He said, oh, why are you so beautiful? I'm like, oh, okay. He's being his... Charming so <clears throat> minutes later, I think it was to seven, because we, I had just switched on the, just the lights in the house, and then he went to the bathroom, and then that's when he fell okay. in the bathroom. Okay. So it was a very minor seizure, I must say, not but, a major. But you were throwing water on him, trying to wake yes, him up. Yes, definitely. Yeah. I had. Uh, um, Fortunately, the, the guys uh, that he, he sings with, yeah. they were still at, ho at okay. home. Okay. I called them, we threw water on him. Obviously, I was praying and praying. Mm. And, and then he asked, what happened? What happened? And then I told him, you just, you just fell and collapsed in the bathroom. That's what happened. Did that give you a little bit of hope that, you know, you didn't have to take him to the hospital unconscious, that he woke up after? No, he woke up and yeah, asked because yeah. yeah, he, he kept on... What happened? Oh. Because he saw all of us. On top of him trying yes, to wake him up. Exactly. Did you take him to the hospital? Immediately. Then? Okay. Immediately. Okay. We called the paramedics and then we took him straight to the hospital. And in the hospital, they found out, okay, first thing first, I said, go check his heart. Because he'd had heart problems because before. Because he had a heart, uh, a heart, heart problem before. Yeah. It went, they went to, this is the CT scan, they checked the brain obviously because he had a seizure yeah oxygen the brain yeah. is fine the heart they check the hearts the heart is perfectly fine because there's something that i was more concerned about and then they said they are picking up something on his that he it's like he it's got a, a major kidney uh, infection oh, wow. 
uh, they asked for a permission, obviously, to, to, to start him on antibiotic immediately. Okay. So they started immediately uh, with the antibiotics and to flush the, the, the infection out, yeah. yes, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the system. So obviously I'm sitting there, I'm sitting there holding his hand because he kept on, 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 on moving and, mm. you know, hard. Like somebody who's been shaken by uh, a very heavy uh, force. force. So <clears throat> two, three hours later, I'm told, ma'am, we need to rush your husband to the ICU. Mm. And I'm asking, why? And they, we to, I'm told, um, the kidneys are failing, like mm. completely failing. And then we had to check, what did he eat? So now I'm you're asking everyone that was with him? I'm asking now the guys who have been traveling with him the entire week. Guys, think about, think, because he's very careful and particular about yeah. the food that he takes. And he drinks a lot of water. So him and kidneys, yeah. I, I wouldn't even you think, wouldn't think about it. It's the last thing ever, on your mind. It's the last thing on my mind. So. I, we had to check with the boys. Guys, think, did he, did he eat something maybe? And then I was rushing him to the ICU hours later. It was 11 midnight, got admitted to the ICU because he, he kept on shaking, he mm. kept on shaking uh, and a bit confused. And then the, so that's how they, they, that's when they sedated him. Mm. So then I sat there for up until early hours of the morning. Early hours of the morning, I'm told, uh, ma'am, you can go home. You can home. go home. They told you this at 4 o'clock, ma'am. 4 o'clock. Go, go home, ma'am. Uh, rest. Yeah. Come back in the morning. Then he, he, you will be transferred to another doctor who will mm. take care of him going forward. Then I'm coming back in the morning, um, 8 o'clock, yeah. half past 8. Um, so we are still busy discussing um, since he had the kidney that has just collapsed. Yes. So ways to care for him when it comes so home. So where to from now? Okay. Like yeah. the medication. So I'm, I'm being told, okay, now, ma'am, this is how it's going to happen. Um, going to monitor him very well. He's going to be on the host in the hospital for some time. Mm. And then from there, you take him home. And then when you go home, you're going to continue with um, the antibiotic course. So at that point in time, at you, that point, nothing talks to you saying, okay, the, you think the worst is over. <sighs> And besides the fact that I, f I was feeling so nervous, it's like something, I, I, I was feeling the breeze around me that, that, that was so abnormal. Um, I'm only remembering after I was told the message that the breeze I was feeling, cause my knees were, were crumbling. Mm. I could not stand still, mm. but I didn't know what was the fear behind the, this major fear. We had prayed, I had called everybody mm. that I pray with to say, guys, pray. My husband just got admitted in mm. the hospital. And then while we are busy talking with, uh, with, the, with the, the doctor, she's still explaining to me, and uh, now that your husband, we need to. And then I, a nurse grabbed me with the arm outside the, 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 the curtain. Mm. Uh, grab me outside. A few minutes later, the doctor is coming to me, looking at me in the eyes. Ma'am, I am so sorry. Your husband just passed away. Obviously, I was like, no, not, not my husband, not the one that I came here with. Mm. So, We, I came back, um, we, we, I, 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 I asked him, baby, I said to the nurses, no, I'll give me time. It cannot die. Not now. I held his hand, baby, wake up, please. You cannot just die. Not now. Minutes later, when I'm, when they are confirming that he is really gone, Obviously, there were black nurses there. They love him. And they, they could not hold themselves. They were crying. So when I saw the nurses crying, I was like, so it's true. Obviously, I'm trying to wake him up now. Pray. I stand. I called God. God, 
if it is you that I serve every day, that I pray to every day, you are not going to do this to us. Not now. Why, my husband? What happened? Where are you, God? I screamed and I shouted. and Obviously, I'm shouting at God. God, please, you are the God of miracles. I called him by every name that you think of. Every, everything that was coming in my mind. And God, remember his... He has, some, he has a lot to do on, in this world. He cannot just die. I'm begging him, baby, wake up. What about the children? You, you still want us to have a girl. Please wake up. I'm, I'm, I kept on begging him. Minutes went by, minutes went by, minutes went by. Up until it was an hour later. My timing is terrible. I have to take an ad break. I'm so sorry. And oh, we'll be back. Sorry, my timing is shocking. And we're back with Ayanda Ngane for the last time today. I know this could continue for hours, but sadly we are limited by time. Um, so, on that day, right, do you remember because I know when you lose someone, it's very quiet, right? Yeah. Everything just goes quiet. Do you, yeah. did, did that moment happen for you? Uh, it, it, it became so blurry. Uh -huh. It's like people are far. I can't, only people are telling me what I was doing on that day. They are only telling me now that you, Ayanda, it, everything just turned upside down in the hospital because we were begging you to let go <gasps> hours later because I needed to make sure that I'm a Christian, remember? Mm -hmm. So I need to make sure that, is it for real? Has God decided that my husband's journey is, is ending now? Mm -hmm. So they had to pull me away because I could not let go mm -hmm. of his body, you know, to go to, to the mortuary. It, it was the it was the hardest thing ever. It's it it, it was more like I, I I could just start again and, and and do something, but unfortunately, I had to let him go because it was hours later, and I could feel his body was getting cold and stiff. Stiff. Yeah. So when you live in your daily life, right? Because this was four months ago, so it's still very raw. What, what triggers him? Like, is it a smell? Is it his favorite food? Is it his favorite song? Is it his children? What? Everything. Everything, you know, um, the past four months has been very, are still very difficult. It's just a choice um, that I made to stand up because I have a lot on, of, on my shoulder. Mm. The company that I need to run. Mm. I have two children that I need to raise. Mm. We did not have a... Um, uh, a say or a madam. Mm. So if I continue to collapse and sleep and cr continue to feel sorry for myself. Who carries on with his name. And, and carry on with his powerful legacy. Mm. His friends are going to say I failed him. Because. Oh, yeah, no, you can't be that hard on yourself. No? I know. But I think because we've worked together okay. for a I very long understand. time. Mm. So I cannot just let everything go like that. I could not let our employees, ah. because they said to me in January, Madam, go cry, weep, roll down, do everything. But when you come you. back, we are here. Lead so, us. So what's happening on Saturday? I hear there's something on Saturday that you're putting together. Yeah, we are definitely, oh, tomorrow is my husband's birthday. Oh. Yes, he was born on the 21st of April. It's going to be the first birthday uh, with a different address, of course. So it's going to be very difficult, just like the first Valentine's oh, without yeah. him. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, I locked myself in the room the entire day. I didn't want to do anything or see anyone. I was just... Every little thing is, is, is a reminder on every single mm -hmm. day. We wake up every morning and you realize, man, he, my, my, my husband is no longer coming back home. You wake up the second day, oh my goodness. You want to dish 
you, you cook and you dish up. You want to dish up a food for him. You take his, his, his plate and you realize immediately you're holding it. And he's no longer coming back home. So those are very sad moments and they are reminders. Like you, 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 when you are a widow, <laughs> I thank God for, for chapter 10. We, are, we, we have planned, we have planned to, to write a book and release it on our anniversary mm -hmm. in June this year. Um, talking about our marriage, our trials, our tribulations, and our the, the whole journey as a couple, individually, mm -hmm. uh, the business. But you sing. Are you going to write a song for him? And no. <laughs> Come no. on. I, I can't sing. So even at this tribute concert on Saturday, you're not going to sing? I, I, I wish I could. <laughs> but I, I can't sing. Where's the concert? I, I have to go, but I, I want to know where yeah. the concert is because I want concert, everyone to support you. The concert is um, down in Mtualome, where he was raised. Okay. Yes. Uh, we are gathering with the whole community of Mtualome. We are remembering his life, his legacy. We are celebrating. This is the year, this is the concert that we do every year. Okay. Uh, every time he, he, he celebrates his birthday with his community. Mm. So again this year, we thought, why stop? Let us go back, even though my husband is not there, but let us go back and continue with his uh, uh, powerful legacy. There is a, a Swiss on one, a tournament, mm. soccer tournament, netball tournament. The young kids, the youth of the Mtualuma community mm. um, where he grew up, he kept on going back and, and you know, motivating them through sport and music obviously because he was a lover of art so on saturday we will be doing that and we will be having um, a gospel concert mm. um it's free people can come your twitter handle it's Aya, at ayandangwane yes. okay at ayandangwane yes. sa um that's where you can get all the details yes. uh please go and follow her support her because obviously we're carrying on with his legacy the legacy of Sfisongwane. Ayanda, thank you so much for your time. Unfortunately, we've come to the end of the show. I'm so sorry. Thank you so much to my guest, Ayanda. Uh, this is very raw for her. Don't forget that you at home, uh, after this, when you've dried your eyes, you've still got time to enter the at-home competition. Simply follow the instructions on the screen. And who knows, tomorrow you might be a winner. You win yourself a 5,000 Rand e-gift card. From me, oh, thank you so much for joining us. This has been wonderful. Ayanda, you have been wonderful. Yeah, and thank you so much. Us. Thank you.